imagine conducting a research that requires a lot of people you already are set but are you thinking of approaching each one of them one by one well stop right there asianista it would normally be impractical to study a whole population for example when doing a questionnaire survey you see if there are like a million people involved in your study you also probably think would be better to get just a bite of them let's say a sample so whatever it is that you get out of it it's somehow what says it all in your research that's right in research sampling is really important it is a method that allows researchers to infer information about a population based on results from a subset of the population without having to investigate every individual. Reducing the number of individuals in a study reduces the cost and workload, and they make it easier to obtain high quality information. But this has to be balanced against having a large enough sample size with enough power to detect a true association or a relationship. If a sample is to be used by whatever method it is chosen, it is important that the individuals selected are representative of the whole population. This may involve specifically targeting hard to reach groups. For example, if the learning modalities were used to identify participants and you are only to look for modular class students, then the rest, the online class students would not be re registered and therefore excluded from the study by default. Now, there are several different sampling techniques available, and they can be subdivided into two groups, namely probability sampling and non-probability sampling. And each one of them has their own technique, namely simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling, and that belongs to the probability sampling. For the non-probability sampling, the techniques include convenience sampling, quota sampling, purposive sampling, and snowball sampling. For simple random sampling, in this case, each individual is chosen entirely by chance, and each member of the population has an equal chance or probability of being selected. One way of obtaining a random sample is to give each individual in a population a number and then use a table of random numbers to decide which individuals to include. For example, if we have a sampling frame of 12 individuals labeled 1 to 12, you may use a random number table to pick your sample. So if the first four numbers from the random number table were 2, 5, 8, and 10, you may select the individual labeled 2, 5, 8, 10, respectively, and so on. There are many tricky ways to randomize by master list, by draw by lots, or spin the wheel, perhaps. <laughs> All right, for systematic sampling, individuals are selected at regular intervals from the sampling frame. The intervals are chosen to ensure an adequate sample size. So if you need a sample size like n from a population of size x, you should select every nth individual from the sample. For example, if you wanted a sample size of 4 from, from a population of 12, you may select every third member of the sampling frame. In safe cases, you may also use a public establishment to randomly select participants by your desired interval. For example, every third person that's gonna pass on the doorway. Systematic sampling is often more convenient than, some, than simple random sampling, and it is easier to administer. Next is for cluster sampling. So in a clustered sample, subgroups of the population are used as the sampling unit rather than individuals. The population is divided into subgroups known as clusters, which are randomly selected to be included in the study. 
clusters are usually already defined. For example, all members on each household could be identified as cluster. Or all students in the STEM section can be identified as a cluster as well. The last for this uh, sampling is the stratified sampling. In this method, the population is first divided into subgroups, which is normally called strata, who all share similar characteristics. It is used when we might reasonably expect the measurement of interest to vary between the different subgroups, and we want to ensure representation from all the subgroups. Strata may also include age, race, or nationality, or even specific traits like people with glasses. For example, in a study of ICT students, we may stratify the population by sex or gender to ensure equal representation of male and female. The study sample is then obtained by taking equal sample sizes from each stratum. So for non-probability sampling, this is best used when you're doing a qualitative research method. That includes the following. Convenience sampling. This is perhaps the easiest method of sampling because participants are selected based on availability and willingness to take part. Useful results can be obtained, but the bias or results are prone to significant uh, volunteer bias because those who volunteer to take part may be different from those who choose not to. Quota sampling is a method of sampling used by market researchers. Interviewers are given a quota of subjects of a specified type to attempt to recruit. For example, an interviewer might be told to go out and select 20 adult men or 20 adult women, 10 teenage girls and 10 teenage boys so that they could interview them about their television viewing, for example. For purposive sampling, this is also known as judgmental or subjective sampling. This technique relies on the judgment of the researcher when choosing who to ask to participate. Researchers may implicitly thus choose a representative sample to suit their needs or specifically approach individuals with certain characteristics. This approach is often used uh, by the media when canvassing the public for opinions like uh, Facebook polls, and also in qualitative research methods. And the last, we have the snowball sampling. This method is commonly used in social sciences when investigating hard-to-reach groups. So existing subjects are asked to nominate further subjects known to them, so the sampling increases in size, like a rolling snowball. For example, when carrying out a survey of uh, risk behaviors among drug users, participants may be asked to nominate other users to be interviewed. So try to look over your study. Which sampling technique do you think fits your study? Let's see if we can do something about it, Asianista. Break a leg, 